to another episode of Sleeping Giants Red Star Bell Raid. Now, in our last episode, we beat PSG 4-1. And that, for me, is one of our... I mean, I suppose the 6th one against uh, Arsenal, but you guys didn't see that. Um, so for me, the 4-1 is our biggest result that we've ever live comped in this save. And I just couldn't believe that they were so poor against us, considering what a good side they, in theory, and quite clearly are. Um, so we've clearly come a long way and have an amazingly good home record. Now, the question is whether that is going to translate away from home, where we play Heronving today. And this is a crucial game for us, because if we can win it, there is a real chance of us going through here and you never know what could happen we're looking like if we do win this we'll be on for a sort of record points tally for ourselves because we'd have a home game against Manchester United on the last day of the uh, Champions League games so to speak and I tell you what that's some um, that could be interesting and um, we could really be looking at some great points now before we get into that um I just wanted to sort of clear things up about my the way I record because people often give me suggestions and I I love the fact that you do that because one it helps me and two it shows that you're paying attention and actually enjoying the series. Uh, I just sounded like Sean Connery then. I actually enjoyed the series. That was a terrible Sean Connery impression that sounded absolutely nothing. I can like him. But anyway, moving on. Um, yeah. So when you give a suggestion, like if I comment back and say basically, you know, I'm going to try and do that uh, or whatever. Um, Please remember that I don't. it's not going to appear in the next episode you see because I have to record ahead of time still just to try and get things done. So, like, for example, on a Monday, I'll record two episodes of Pompey and two episodes of Red Star, and on a Tuesday, I will try and do the same. Now, usually after that, I would do one on uh, one each on one of each on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. However, I'm trying something new, and it's, the, it's Wednesday today, um, where I do two today um, of each, one of each tomorrow, and then uh, with some other work after that. And then on Friday... Um, some stuff for new projects and things like that just to try and free up some more time to do things and make sure that we can still get the same amount of videos out but the chance for even more content because I'm still working on stuff for the uh, 5k special at some point um, which probably won't have been this weekend that you're seeing this because um, even if we were to hit it which seems unlikely um, it would have been on sort of Sunday kind of time and I'd rather do it like as a weekend thing so it'll almost certainly be next weekend where you see those videos going up uh, which is obviously the Q&A and um, I Red Star versus Pompey uh extravaganza which is going to be interesting that's for sure um and i have got an, i've got a, a little surprise with that one as well so yeah we'll talk about that another time right now let's get into today's episode now we've only had two games to play because we had the two little league games in between now also i've been trying out something new um although i haven't really seen the fruits of it yet because i haven't had enough games to test it uh, basically i found an article again i think this was from no, it wasn't Strikeless. Oh, it might have been Strikeless. I can't remember if it was or not, and I apologise for that. No, I don't think it... Whoa, I can't remember. It was um, an article, basically, about how to stop your players missing clear-cut chances when they are quite clearly awesome players. And, you know, it isn't the tactic because you're creating loads of opportunities. The players just aren't putting them in the net. So, obviously, we've had that problem before, and it's kind of come and gone. But I wanted to see if there was a way around it, and I found this article... And I shared it on... Some of you that follow me on Twitter would have actually seen the article and possibly even on Facebook since it actually got quite a few likes, which is surprising because it never gets... Nothing ever gets liked on Facebook. Um, but basically, there was a few little tap... And you might want to listen to this if you haven't read the article or if you have, just haven't, just go read it. Um, but basically, to do with having things like... If you have, like, shoot more often on, it can sometimes mean that they'll rush their shots. So I've actually turned that off of the players that I did have it on, basically. And it was literally I only had it on one or two players in this team with this tactic. Um, so I've, I've tweaked a few things and I've made my... Um, I've stopped my fullbacks from cutting inside. They're now going to be overlapping because otherwise if you've got inside forwards and the fullbacks are cutting inside too, then it's sort of going to funnel everything quite narrow and I want to get a bit more width and I think this could help people like Adamenko get even more assists. So yeah, that, that's basically... What I've tried out, I only tried it out in the second game we played, and unfortunately, it's not really a fair representation because I I rotated the squad to almost uh, distorted levels during that game, so I'm I'm not sure quite how well it's actually worked. But the result in that game was good. Um, but our first game of the month was our away at rivals Jagodina, who were second place in the league at this point. Chifezic is born in there, and Milangaj smashing, I say smashing, rolling in his seventh goal of the season as he trundles on. Now this was a strange game in the sense that we blitz them in the first half of this i mean absolutely blitz them you know 10 minutes in and we're two goals to the good here guy on the edge of the area so militich who had a great game he got a hat trick of assist in this one ristich's ball in and it's cleared away again but for some reason we once we got to like basically we got fallen up against them in this game what a strike that is from garage as well uh, with his sixth of the season he's kind of gone under the radar there but we got fallen up in this game without them having a single shot 
And then from then on, they were really, really good and we could barely get anywhere. Um, we really struggled to get the ball off them. And most of the highlights after that point, once we were falling up, were all for them, which was very strange. I mean, they obviously made some tactical changes and Toshka, you can see there, managed to make himself um, the man for us with his sixth of the season as well, continuing to get the goals. But it was just really strange how that happened. So eventually, you know, I just decided to sit and put our defensive tactic on um, just to make sure that we won the game. As you can see, Guy actually loses it, it comes back to Ristic and... Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. But we needed to... I don't know, they obviously basically switched to a tactic and it worked against us, basically, because nothing I did after that made any difference. We did manage to score with it. Um, I mean, obviously, saw this sort of goal mouth scramble there for 4-1. That was their first shot. And... I mean, I didn't really care because we're a four one up. It's just interesting that we can't seem to just stop them from doing that. But they made some good tactical changes and Yagodina are a good side. So if anything, the fact that we were four it up was more of the surprise of the game rather than them scoring. They are a good team and definitely deserve the goals. Um, Jovic did actually then make it 5-1 though. Um, coming off the bench today. He's actually not play he's not started either of the two games this month. I've been resting him up uh, ready for today's game. Um, he was a little bit jaded for this one, so we had uh, Toshka up front with Militic. And Toshka did a good job. He scored um, at least one. No, I'm pretty certain he just scored the one. But this was weird. Like, ball over the top, Militic brings it down, drops it into jo uh, Jovic, takes a touch, and finishes it off with all kinds of plombs. And that made it 5-1. And from then on, obviously, you know, the game was done, but they did manage to get another one back. And it's this sort of play that I mean about us being not quite so defensively solid this year. We're better attack-minded in terms of the amount of goals we scored this year is almost certainly, I think we could crack 100 again. Um, but I can't see us conceding any less than 30 this year. We, we are far worse defensively, or it might just be because we're attacking more. They did also have a man sent off for a horror tackle on uh, Nenek Gavridge, I think it was. Uh, if I can remember now. That doesn't work, does it? <laughs> um, later in the game. Now, in the next game against Boric, now I didn't realise Boric were third in the league when I put this uh, tactic into action, but as you can see from our starting lineup, Bajic, Jaksic, Jan Krupa, uh, Laurentiu, Laurentiu Marian, Nikola Antic stayed in, China, Cernic, Gajic, Toshka, Zivkovic, and Belic. And this was with the slight tactical tweaks that I made, and I think it has still improved because this was a a more rotation choice, a full rotation, and then I actually rotated it even more manually myself by adding, taking out a couple more first teamers, basically. I think the only first team player that actually made the cut in this game was, uh, I think, Gajic and Lazic were the only two. But there you go, Marian putting us in front with his first goal for the club. And then, well, it was just about Florent and Tosca from then on, getting himself in there, and he just looks so reliable now. Seventh goal of the season for him, I think he could get us easily 15 goals. And for a substitute striker, essentially, that is a great return, and he's clearly starting to really improve now, and that's great to see. And it's good to see Marianne get some football. I really feel confident in our ability to rotate the uh, squad around a bit now. We've got a lot of quality in our youth ranks, and it's about time we started using them a bit more, rather than just trying to blitz every game. Like So ahead of important matches, I'm going to rotate the squad heavily and do full rotation, because why the hell not? Toshka then got himself in there and made it 3-0 after just 22 minutes. And after that, I decided to see what we'd be like as a defensive unit. And we switched to the defensive tactic, and as you can see, got ourselves a clean sheet. So, got three goals. I'm trying to get three goals in every game to sort of keep the average up, but then also trying to keep clean sheets. So that was good. Very, very solid. And that leaves the league looking like this. As you can see, Partizan are really having a good season by their standards. You know, they're, seven, they're still 10 points behind us, of course, but, you know, they're not going to catch us. That isn't really the problem here. It's the fact that they've actually had a really good season for once and are starting to run away from the teams below. You know, they've had two seasons of really poor fifth place finishes, and for them, that is genuinely awful. Um, but this year, they look like to be right in there. And teams like, you know, Jagodina and Napredak really do seem to have slipped away. And look at that, Chukorichki are down in 11th place. Uh, it's also nice to see OFK um, in their first season back in the top flight, along with India, in fact, um, who haven't been in the top flight since we've been doing this save, are both sitting comfortably in mid-table, which is nice. Um, as for the... If we just take a little look at the second division. Uh, Donny and Shrem are actually having a good season. Metal Edge up there, and wow. Interesting. Palanka. We played them in the Cup a couple of years ago, I believe. Um... So there we go. Right, okay, um, let's just take a little look at the squad. There's not too many changes, but we'll see. Um, as you can see, Jovic there has 22 goals in 22 games, which is stonking. Uh, Savitrich has 11. He's nearly fully fit. I did actually bring him on as a sub in that last game to give him some match fitness, but he's not quite there yet, so I don't know if he'll start today against Herenveen. Uh, Militic has 10, and Toshka has 8, so that's not bad either. I think we'll have quite a few players in double figures. Uh, assist, Savitrich and Militic with 11 apiece. Chufezic has 9, which is also good. Man of the match, Jovic with four, no surprises there. Yellow cards, Bazan Vera has five. Red cards, Mihailo Ristic has one. 
Uh, key aerial challenges, Baz and Vera with 32, but Jovic is right in there with 31 as well. Key passes, Militic and Ristic sharing, well, near the top of that one. Key tackles, Darko Lazic, uh, 15. Yep. Uh, interceptions, Baz and Vera just over Lazic, but Antic has done well there. Adamenko, despite playing generally as a fullback as well, doesn't seem to be so good at intercepting. Um, as for value, Basan Vera's value is creeping up a little bit, but it's still weird that the values are so low still. Um, considering I gave some of these players new contracts in the summer and their values have dropped still, it's it's a, they, the whole lot just dropped across the board. It's really strange. Um, so there we go. Right, okay. Um, let's get into today's game. Heronveen away is crucial for us. Um, if PSG could beat Manchester United, this would be absolutely brilliant because if we win... And P if us and PSG win, we are through, basically. Th that is the gist of it, basically. You know, if we can win today against Terravin and PSG can win against Manchester United, then we go through um, to the next round. And we'd actually have a really good chance in that last game to potentially win the group as well, which would be quite some achievement in a group that's got Manchester United and freaking PSG in it. So, hey, let's give it a crack. Um... Hopefully, the fact that we do play with such great width could come in handy today. Now, we are away from home, but we've got to just go for this one. So, Jovic, Militic, Gajic, Gavric, Ristic, Tufedzic, Antic, Bazan, Vera, Lazic, and Adamenko. Um, apart from Nikola Antic, most of them are looking fairly fresh. Jovic is not quite there yet, but it's nice to see Bazan, Vera looking a bit more fresh. He's had sort of 20 days off, basically. We had a two-week gap in between the games, uh, the league games, plus I rested this entire team, apart from Nikola Antic, uh, for that league game. So, we should have... You know, a relatively good team, plus obviously options off the bench. You know, Kofi, Toshka, Pia, Cernic, Belic, and Kone. Um, so, Vitrich, as you can see, I think he played a reserve game just to try and get his fitness up, so not quite ready. Right, let's uh, let's go for this, guys. I personally feel that we're good enough to win away at Heronveen, but it's still going to be a tough one, and I've seen weird kind of results all over the place, so I'm not... Wow, that is a very, very... The tactic looks well different there, and the way that they've got one really advanced player, and like, hmm... This could still be quite an interesting one. As long as we don't lose, I think. Like, I'd prefer it if we... I mean, the fact is, we're going to have to play Man United in the next game anyway. And I think that we'll probably do a good job. But, you know, I want to make sure that... Oops. I want to make sure that we ideally could wrap up qualification today. That would be ideal. Um, and then it's just deciding who wins the group in the next game. But we'll see. Um be nice to get an away win. We've only ever had one away win in Europe. Oh, no, we've had two because we beat Arsenal. Um in the knockout stage and we beat Galatasaray last year in this stage but uh, we're going to put in a shitty performance aren't we and PSG are winning which is good to see uh oh uh oh uh oh come on that's offside isn't it yeah um, but dang what Heron have started well in this opening 10 minutes I'm just wondering if this continues we maybe should switch to our defensive style and just try to weather the storm so to speak it's been an incredibly cagey game in the first 27 minutes basically no shots uh, uh oh here they come again, but we've only had the one shot so far in this one, and I'm not entirely enthused with our before. Oh, wow. Good block again. Um, I'm just going to switch it to our defensive tactic, because I think it might open up a bit more space on the pitch. You know, if we let them come onto us a little bit more, uh, I know which is a dangerous tactic, but I've heard that can work if you're struggling to break a team down. If you just draw them out a little bit more, you might get a few more chances. Um, play sort of counter-attacking, but with a sort of, I mean, we're not playing counter-attacking, we're playing defensive, but it might just work for us. Um, it has sort of improved our shooting compared to theirs, but it's certainly not exactly led to many good chances in this game. I mean, I would take the draw, of course, but, you know, a win would be better, considering how well we did against Manchester United away. Um, what I'm tempted to do is just switch it to counter, to just draw them out a little bit, if I can. Um... Mm. Yeah, that's that's the idea. We're going to draw them out in the second half a little and see if we can do that. Oh, if we keep a clean sheet and get a nil-nil draw, then so be it. Uh, apologies if it is that, because then that'll be a bit of a boring live con for you guys to watch. But, you know, I expected it would be better, a better game than this. But it would certainly give us a really good chance in the next game, provided we didn't lose to Manchester United at home. Um, then we'd be in good shape. Jan Sofas. Um, Antic with the ball upfield to nobody. I mean, oh, Militic is in. No, he's not. <laughs> I mean, the game has actually been fairly even. They have had that one clear-cut chance, though, uh, which they failed to score. Vermeer, he's going to play it to the left-back, isn't he? Yeah. Um, we've dropped a little deeper. We're just trying... I don't know. It's 
It's a bit of a game of chess, this this one. Uh, Basin Vera is lost out there, and that's not good. Get back into position, mate. Don't let that gap in the middle open up. Um, Adamenko does well. Great play from him. Um, is there going to be a chance for us in this game? You know, because it would only take... What are you doing? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, what the hell can I say about that? Just clear it. I don't have it on play out of defence. You just... What are you doing? Also, surely since it came off him, it's offside because he was miles off, but... Oh, I don't believe that. <sighs> well, actually, let's switch back to our current, our original tactic um, and then throw it on attacking and just see if we can crack at them. I can't believe they've scored that. Well, I mean, I can believe they've scored it, but I can't believe we've let that happen. What a ridiculous goal. Ah. Oh. Thing is, if we lose, I mean... Technically, it doesn't change much if PSG win. You know, if we if we lose here, it still doesn't really make much difference. It, it's a case of, you know, as long as we don't lose to Man United at home, then it won't make any difference to us whatsoever, in fact. Um, right, let's just try and get some more shots. Let's take more risks. Let's get stuck in. Let's pass into some space with them. Um, let's make a substitution as well. Uh, let's bring on Tosha, because Militic has done nothing worth noting. I wish I could bring someone on for Antic, really, but... Unfortunately, we're not exactly blessed with left backs at the moment. Um, hmm. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I would hate to lose to that goal, basically. You know, I mean, we've not been great tonight, and neither have they really, but they have been the better side. Um, but that goal, I mean, Christ on a bike. Um, right, come on, guys. Let's do something a bit more. Let's get a bit better here and just get an equaliser. You know, a one-all draw, I'd take it. It's not the best result in the world, but I would certainly take it. Oh, oh, what the hell? <laughs> the goalkeepers always tease you when they keep that. They drag that ball. Um, it's basically, you know, as you were if we were to lose here, because Perenveen still can't really get through. There's no real opportunity. Oh, my life. Some of the passing today has been absolutely shocking. Um, and, oh, there's a huge gap opened up now. Chara's through for Heronveen. Don't let him score another one. Oh, that is a woeful finish from Chara. They've created three good opportunities, though, and we've just not. I mean, that is as simple as that. We just haven't done it. Uh, I'm going to make another sub. I'm going to get Pia on for uh, Bazan Vera. And I might even get Kofi on in a little while for two feds. It's just because he's on a yellow card and I don't want... We've got a lot of players on bookings at the moment. Gajic, Adamenko, two feds, Ristic. Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Gavrich. Ristic. Oh, Gajic. Oh, yes, at the back post. It's Nenad Gavrich. It's one all here. Um, that really doesn't make much difference. So we may as well go for the win. And what I'm, my thinking behind that is us drawing here and us losing here basically don't mean anything. They basically mean the exact same thing. If we don't win against Manchester... If we... You know, avoid defeat against Manchester United, then it doesn't matter what happens, whether we win or draw here. So, sorry, whether we lose or draw. So we may as well, with that in mind, go for the win here, because that could make all the difference. And I think that's sort of the calculated way I'm looking at this now. Uh, Gaic, come on, make the run. Gaic around the corner, perhaps? No, out wide to Adamenko. Can he pick a perfect cross? Ball in. Jovic, no, it's cleared. And down to Ristic. Toska! Oh, Florentin, that was your chance, mate. That was your chance, son. Uh, we've come back into this game in the last few minutes. I don't know what Heron Vina are doing, but they are not playing that well in this last sort of 10 minutes of the game. That being said, they will almost certainly pop up with a late winner. Um, here we go. Amersfoort is too wide to surely score. There we go. Bayic makes a save. I'd take a draw. It's not the worst result in the world, but maybe it could have been better. Um, but there's always the chance for that late winner if we carry on pushing it, because why the hell not, you know? Um... I'm going to make a substitution as well, just... Oh, balls, I know I should have taken him off, but we don't have a left-back on the bench. <sighs> okay. Um... Oh, actually, I'll tell you what I could have done, actually, is... Um... That... Adamenko can play left-back, but not that well. Um, okay, well, that's what we're going to go with now. Um... Hopefully he's okay. Right. Two minutes to go. I mean, it's not that important if we win this or lose. Oh, uh, there we go. Well, you know, we've actually come back towards the end of this one and sort of drawn ourselves back into the game, but a, a one-all draw isn't the worst result. I mean, 
away from home in Europe, we do still have a lot to learn. It's at home where we are incredibly strong, and it's still giving us a good chance going into that next match. PSG almost certainly are going to win the group now, because they've got themselves, I think, probably a home game against Herenveen, so to top that one off. But we've still got a game against Manchester United at home, and provided we don't lose, we will go through. And look at what we've done against Man United. We've beaten them last year, and we've already drawn, and they were lucky to get a point against us at Old Trafford this year. So I think it bodes well for us. You know, I think we'll at least get a point from that game. We might have to scrape through a little bit, but I feel like we're at least going to get a point. So, you can find out what happens in the next episode. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the video. And if you'd like to even on that, please subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Belgrade in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the game against Manchester United that will decide our fate. There's now a lot more riding on it than I expected. See you guys in a bit. Bye-bye.